and welcome to Jamie TV. Thank you very much for joining me. Hey, Vortex is in the chat. Hello, dude. Thank you very much for being here. I just, uh, I just wanted to try and do a, a nice, you know, a nice fade out there. But the problem is that my desk is just, my arms are not very long, you know, and my desk is just a bit too far away for me to fade it like uh, in a cool fashion. So um, it's been a while since I've done the stream. So please do let me know in the chat. Um, can you hear my uh, microphone and could you hear the music? Okay. Uh, just it would be reassuring to know. And incidentally, do you like my new purple pop shield? I'm giving it a I'm giving it a one out of ten in its effectiveness. Oh, thank you very much, Vortex. Um, yeah, I'm giving it a one out of ten uh, for quality in terms of being a pop shield. However, the color is awesome. I'm giving it a ten out of ten for color. Basically. I was having one of those moments, you know, like there's something I really, really meant to do today. And I, and I can't remember. What, oh, yeah. And I got like a spare minute and it was order a pop shield for my microphone for when I'm streaming. And uh, and I thought, yeah, let's get let's see if we can get a brightly colored one. Let's get a cool one. Right. So I went on eBay and and I, and I found one. There's a purple pop shield and it's about half a pence from China. So I ordered it. And, and about 80 years later, uh, this parcel arrived with 50 brightly coloured pop shields in of all different colours. <laughs> so I've got this big bag of pop shields. And um, and I could use a different colour for every stream. Although I like this one. I like the purple. It almost matches the frame that I made for my stream. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Let's just have a look who's already here. Um, so I've already said hello to Vortex. And um, who is really must be guest of honor today? And um, and hi, Colin. Hi, L Waves. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, oh, and hi, Sam. Thanks for being here, man. All right. So, what's this all about? Well, Vortex at Mobile Music Pro wanted to give something away uh, to the mobile music community for Christmas because he's a lovely chap. And so he asked me to make some guitar MIDI uh, that he could just give away. Although I have to say, he paid me to make it, even though he was giving it away for free, because he's an awesome gentleman. And now to me, guitar MIDI, it's like it's something that like I would personally never use because I play guitar, I play bass, you know. And um, and I, I play anything with strings. So it's not something that I would ever use. And so I thought, well, that's kind of a bit out of my comfort zone, really. But I thought about it and I thought, well, it's kind of a challenge, really. So what I did with these MIDI parts, there are parts for, uh, for bass, there are rhythm parts, chord parts, lead parts, and what's the other? Did I say bass? Bass, chords, oh, melodies. Melodies, I think I said bass twice. There are melody parts. And so what I did was, uh, for each part, I sat down with a guitar or a bass, and I worked out a part. Because what I wanted to do was, I wanted to provide, I wanted to provide parts that would be played, um, that that how do I say that? How do I even say that? Um, when you play something on a guitar, you play it a certain way. Um, there are things that you would play on guitar that you wouldn't necessarily play on something with keys, and vice versa, just because of the way that the instrument is put together. So what I wanted to do was work out parts that would be played on a stringed instrument and then translate them to MIDI so that people who don't play... Um, the stringed instruments or don't play them well enough to record them perhaps could use them in their recordings right so let's go to if i if i press this button over here and then press this one right now here we are at vortex's mobile music pro website which is a fabulous website it's really really well done and if we go to free downloads here then 
we just scroll down a little bit and here we'll see acoustic guitar pack and electric guitar pack there are 50 free MIDI files in each one if you go to let's click on acoustic guitar and what you do you'll want both of them right so you click on add to cart and then go back and go to the other one click on that and add that to your cart and the way this works is really really cool you will actually I think if I just press these buttons over here let's add a frame there okay so now I'm in picture whilst talking about the website if I point no I point this way okay so what you what you do um, yeah you know when you when you download things like MIDI files and samples or software it can be anything from painless through to absolutely excruciating and this is about as painless a download as it comes and I purposely today downloaded both packs um, on my iPad because I wanted to see how difficult it was to do on an iPad because you know sometimes that can be a bit of a pain and it was actually just as easy as doing it on the desktop um, it and and when you don't actually let me let me just go through it properly right so you add it to cart and then you just follow through you go to the cart and you just well it's empty so I can't really show you anything there yeah okay well anyway it's obvious what you do you get an email saying thank you for your purchase you get an email telling you how to download it which is superbly easy and because it's only MIDI information it takes about 10 seconds per pack well it did for me anyway and um, and then you just shift it to where you want it to be and now on the iPad what I found was once I downloaded it it gave me a, a little pop-up that said send to if you press on send to you get you know on your iPad when you get that little I don't know what you call the icon but it's like a little rec don't twat the microphone you stupid hippie it's like a little rectangle with an arrow and that gives you all the options for where you'd like to place whatever it is that you downloaded or wherever you want to send something to and it gives you the option to open it immediately into Cubasis 3 so let's go to my iPad here and now use the other mouse now hippie and well actually I just need to press something here okay right now mouse wake up thank you now if I go to media over here and come down to MIDI and then my MIDI files with a double click and then using my mouse wheel thanks to the latest Cubasis update now down here you'll see all the files so when I downloaded each of these packs I just pressed on the send to Cubasis 3 and it put them straight into this folder like this for me so you'll see there there are a hundred files now let's have a look at those files these ones up the top here we'll come to later on so starting with the ones here with the longer titles now if I close this and go back here do a click on that again don't know why it did that to me you'll see that they have a very uniform way of being labeled um, now this is something that's very important to Vortex he likes things to be labeled in a certain way so what you get is at the beginning MMP for Mobile Music Pro and then you've got EMP8 that is the name for the acoustic pack and when we get further down this list you'll see it's EMP9 and that's how you know it's from the electric pack it then tells you what key the part is in and then BPM how many bars it lasts for and that it's intended for guitar then it tells you what kind of a file it is so like I said earlier it will either be chords or a melody a rhythm part um, a bass part or a lead part and they will all say loop because they all loop and they're all numbered so 
all the melody parts are numbered one through to whatever and chord parts etc etc all right so let's come down here i'll make this smaller again right now in fact so let me just close that a moment now let's just have a look at this project here that i opened up the stream with i'm not taking any notice of the chat so if anyone's joined us that i've missed i apologize i will try and come back to the back to the chat uh, shortly yes colin it is a, a consistent naming convention is really helpful it's very very important um now you'll notice if i zoom in on if i just do this now hopefully you can see that it may be a little bit small depending on what device you're watching on but where the midi is dropped into cubase is here the full label appears there so that's real helpful for navigating around and just knowing exactly what is what and strangely enough i don't know why but when you drop them into cubase on the desktop the uh the naming because i mean these are intended obviously for for mobile uh, musicians because that's our audience but really you could use them just as easily on a desktop and um, but for some reason the naming thing doesn't work the same in cubase it does give you an idea of what it is but it doesn't give you the full name that's something i need to get my head around because i'd like it to be consistent but that's something for me to work on uh, for anything i work on like this in future right so let me just go back to this view here not that one stupid hip oh, there we are right okay so now that project that i opened up the thing with i've got in here um this is a bass part that i wrote and i thought oh wouldn't it be nice to have a double bass for it but then it took me a little while to realize i got the swam double bass so that's what's playing that back. Now, here's the thing about a slight difficulty for me with this stream is I don't really have any guitar sim uh, software very much because, like, I wouldn't use it. You know, I, I don't really need it because I play these instruments. So uh, some of you guys might have some sounds some software that's far superior to what i'm going to use today i'm just going to use what bits i do have just to show you how it works um the main thing that i have that's got guitar software in is this little beauty which is a far more useful app than i ever thought it would be um there's quite a few usable guitar sounds in here uh this one this jazz guitar sound i've thrown a few effects on um let's just throw that over there let's just take off these effects okay so that's the basic sound but I did take off the reverb that's, it did have some reverb on it. But I took that off because I wanted to use one of my choice. And I added this fantastic, fantastic app to it. This is an app that people are going to be going balmy about. But today is not about this app. But look out for this one. Then here, I've got another sound from BS16i, as it's abbreviated to in Cubases. Then here, what I did was, I took the chords that I'd made for this particular arrangement. Um, 
Well, what I did was I went into this melody part and then I changed these this arpeggio into just solid block chords transposed it up and used a nice sound from DRC and then of course I've got Borster for the percussion which is the most realistic um, percussion or drum software available on iOS sadly sadly um, it's brilliant I'm not saying anything wrong with uh, Bor there's anything wrong with Borster but unfortunately there's nothing um, on the same level when it comes to like um, an acoustic drum kit. I did kind of have a bit of a, a dig at Clev Grand saying, look, you've made a fantastic job of this. Could you do like the same thing, but with a kit? And uh, so far, I don't think they'll listen to me. All right. So yes, it is calling. Yes. Agreed. Tone Stack Pro is, is quite fabulous. Hi, Gerald. Hi. Thanks for being here. I'm waving to the chat instead of waving to the camera because I'm some kind of stupid old pleb. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of this project and we'll go uh, to completely the wrong place. Use your mouse, you stupid man. Right. Let's go to projects. And then I started one. basically named a blank project because I wanted to remind myself to say Happy Christmas everyone. I called it Happy Christmas 2022. And then that became the demo track. So then I started a new one and I can't remember what it's called. So let's just go and make a new project. And we'll call it Crimbo MIDI thing. Okay. Right, I'm just going to delete the default tracks that you get. And then we'll go to our media. And we'll go down to MIDI. My MIDI files. And what I'll do is I'll just grab the first file. So the first 50 in this list in my MIDI files will be uh, the acoustic ones just because of the very uniform way of everything's named so they're all listed as EMP8 I'm going to just grab hold of the first one and pull it into the project which you will see is by default 120 BPM when I let go of this it will change it to 116 because that's what the MIDI has been saved at now, another thing that I'm not quite sure about, and I have to say this is this is probably down to me. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I need to do more work on this. But what I did was, when I saved all these files, uh, some, I made, some of them I made on uh, my iPad in Cubasis, and some of them I made in Cubase Pro on my desktop. Um, wherever they were made, I then pulled them all into a project in Cubasis, and I resaved them with the proper naming structure. And also, I, I selected an appropriate Cubasis instrument. Now, what should happen is when you pull it into the project, it should open that instrument automatically as well as changing, changing the tempo. It does on some of them, and some of them it doesn't. And I honestly have no idea why. It's the same on the desktop as well works on some and not others I really I really want to get to the bottom of why that is but uh, for now I honestly don't know so what it's done is it's pulled up a piano in fact while I'm here let me just talk about this you'll see as you look down the list you'll see that some of the files um, when you look at what key it's in and what the BPM is you'll see that uh, some of them are kind of standalone. There's like one chord progression or um, one melody part, etc., etc., and there's nothing to go with it. It's just a standalone bit of MIDI. 
there are others where there are two, three, sometimes four that work together. Um, so for this one, there are two where you'll see A minor 116 BPM. So this one obviously works with that one. So I'll drag that one in as well. And you'll see this time, that one has automatically selected nylon guitar. Why it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, no idea. Anyway, what I'm going to do before I press play or anything, I'm going to pull down the volumes just in case. I'm going to blast anyone's ears out. And I'm going to mute this nylon guitar. And we'll just press play on this one. Okay, so now does Sam know? Because Sam is the kind of man who would know this kind of thing. Oh, hi, T-Mac. Thanks for being here. Um, Sam says if the MIDI file is a general MIDI standard program change, it will select the correct instrument. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it that way. I didn't do it that way. Um, but... If you save something from Cubasis, now I don't know about from Cubase, but from Cubasis, uh, as a MIDI file with a Cubasis instrument selected, by and large, if you pull that back in, or send it to someone and they pull it into their project, it should, it should select that same instrument. But just not every time. Anyway, right, so let me just, let me just double click on this MIDI if I get hold of the right mouse. Right, now here's what I want to show you. So you'll see here that if I, if I go, I need to just crush this down a bit. There we go. I'll stretch this out. So I was talking earlier about how when you strum a guitar, you play a guitar a certain way, right? So when you play a guitar, you don't hit every string at exactly the same time. So you, what you get is kind of a drag effect. So you'll see down here, he said, getting all the wrong mouse again. So there's my first strum, and that's my lowest string. And I'm strumming six strings on this chord, and so there's a slight delay as we go across the strings. And that's how you get, it's still a piano sound, but that's how you get that dragged sound. Now. If I, before we do this, we should select a guitar sound. Let's go here and we'll just go use my mouse wheel. Hey, Vortex, I'm using my mouse wheel in Cubasis. That's very exciting. Not the most exciting update this time around, it has to be said for Cubasis. But whilst it's not exciting, it's not got any sort of like fancy bells and whistles it is an excellent facelift it has it has um fixed a lot of little bugs in fact if you look at the bug fixes if you look at the list it's immense and it's now an incredibly stable you know almost bug free piece of software he said hoping that he didn't discover one during this stream um you know it's it's tidied it up, it's smartened it up, it's now a really smooth, slick piece of software. I think, yeah, getting in on the mouse wheel action, <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I, it is the perfect platform to now bring along those exciting things that we wanted, Steinberg, like tempo track and mono mix down, and um, a better sampling thing for people who are into that kind of thing. Okay. Yes, a quality of life update. That's a fantastic way to say it. Thanks for the L waves. That's, yeah, I'm going to remember that. Okay, so I'm going to select, let's see, let's select nylon guitar for this. And now if I can get my mouse to work, I'll just press play. Okay. Now, okay, so it's an Cubase internal sound. It's not the most fabulous sound in the world. I'm just going to 
Just bring that release in a little bit. There's a slight organy sound to this nylon guitar, but if you bring the release in a little bit, it just improves it. Okay, now the other thing about the MIDI. Yeah, let's just let's just um nail this down before we move on. Hey Jade's here. Hi Jade. Hope that you're well. And Russ. Now then. iOS royalty in the house. Russ is here. I better try and be good. Stop talking bollocks, Jamie. Right. So now here's the thing. These MIDI parts need to loop. And so um, my first note has to be right on the bar. It can't be before the bar because then it wouldn't loop properly. Um, but when you do a dragged chord on the guitar, which is most of the time when you think about it, the first note often comes slightly before the bar and the rest kind of drag along after. So if you look closely here, what you'll see is my first note is right on the bar because that's just where it has to be because it's MIDI. But then after that, you'll see, I've got hold of the wrong mouse again. You'll see that this note comes in slightly before the line and these come in slightly after, okay? And that is throughout. Now, I accidentally pressed that, but so I might as well point this out now. Um, the notes in most of the files, the vast majority of the files, are randomized there's just a few a few files where i did actually um i did actually put the midi in in a quantized way and leave the um the notes at even velocities just for things where i thought that that was really appro appropriate for that particular part but most of them are very humanized and it shows up a lot better when you use some quality guitar simulator software, which I don't have any of on the iPad. Um, I did have uh, Ample Soundwares, um, Ample Guitar Acoustic and Les Paul emulations for a week, the trial versions on desktop, which are fabulous. They really are very, very good. And they have actually asked me if they send me some software would i do a video about it and i said yes and i thought if they send it me for this stream i'll show it you briefly because it's spectacular and i have been on at them about maybe bringing it to ios but anyway right so uh well that's my job vortex um you know it's um if you ask me to to do a job then i'll do i'll do my very best um Okay, so there's my chord part. Okay, and then the melody part to go with is here. Let's pick a different guitar sound for that one. Maybe a clean electric. Now, of course, as far as the tempos go, I mean, I put a tempo on the um, on the label for the MIDI part when I save it. Um, just a tempo that I think that it sounds particularly good at. But because it's MIDI, you can move it to any tempo you want. So let's just drag this one down a bit. Right, and you'll see here in the melody part, again, the velocities are humanized and the, uh, and it's not quantized, it's slightly imperfect so that it just gives you that much more human feel because, you know, like, 
when you when you listen to some proper guitar music, and I don't mean those modern bands that you know that that time everything perfectly to the bar, that get hold of every note and time every note perfectly, which just sounds so so bland. I mean proper old rock bands, you know. Uh, let's say if you were to um, listen to an ACDC track in the studio and you get rid of everything but the two guitar parts, because very often there really are just two guitar parts on there. The fact that they are human and not perfectly in time to each other and not, you know, not perfected is actually what makes it sound so good. It's what makes it sound so big. So, I think I could have explained that better, but I'm moving on. Right, so what I'm going to do, um, that's um, a couple of examples from the acoustic pack. So, I'm going to delete these two tracks, and then I'm going to move down to the electric pack. And um, let's pull a few files in and try and make something with it. Thank you. Thank you, Vortex. Thank you very much, man. Um, so, now, there's one in particular that I'm looking for that has, has a, a few parts to it. You know this mouse wheel thing? It's all very well and everything, but I think I need to look at my mouse, maybe adjust... Um, I think you can adjust the sensitivity of it in the iPad settings. And I really need to do that because I'm shooting all over the place with this. Right, now I think that's the one I am looking for. Let's just drag it in and see. Right, so... You see again, it's changed the tempo for us. Yeah, I think this is the one. Um, here we go. Bass, chords, lead, and melody. Okay, so this one comes with four parts. Let's just drag this over here. Now, before I press play, I must just pull down these faders. Rather than blast anyone's eardrums out. And let's just have a listen to what we've got there individually. We've got a bass part being played on a piano. We've got some more dragged chords. This is a, a lead guitar part. Ben sounds funny on piano. And then this is the melody part. You'll see that these ones have just opened up as piano parts, whereas this one has actually selected the clean guitar as it was supposed to. So let's start with this one. Right, I'm going to just turn this all off. I'll mute these. Right, let's find an instrument for this. I'm going to go to audio units and... Select this. Now, here's the thing. When you want to choose an instrument here, you get a little search bar. How about that vortex? If anyone from Steinberg is watching. Uh, okay, let's type in guitar. Right. And... 
can't remember which guitars are which in here, so I'll just grab one. <laughs> Right, let's see what we can do with that. It is Sam, global search. It's desperately, I mean, right, if I do this, right, if I go here, right, and, and although, although I make iOS music videos, and so quite a lot of developers now send me, um, apps far more apps than i've got time to demo actually if i'm totally honest because i've got desktop st stuff coming at me as well now um but even so i've got a lot less apps than some people but look at that you know <laughs> i've got less synths than most people honestly i've only got about 30. <laughs> it's madness Is there a bit of latency between um, between the iPad screen and the and and the other cameras? Is that what you're saying? It could be. Um, that could be because I connect my iPad screen to the streaming software via um, a Reflector Four, which is what um, Pete Johns told me to use. And right, Colin, yeah, and um, and that uses the Wi Fi. I couldn't find a way to connect it with a cable and and then straight into the computer. It, it just the the computer just would not talk to my iPad no matter what I did. So, if anyone knows a way around that, I sure would like to know because I have noticed that sometimes in the stream it does lag, um, it's kind of behind. Which is annoying. Um, okay, so what was I on about? Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reverb off in here. And then let's see what we can do with this sound. Thank you, Jed. Jed to the rescue. Again. <laughs> Thank you, Jed. Um, okay, so what I'll do, I'm going to go here. I really want to show you this. Right, I'm just going to have to show you this. I mean, you've probably all all got the beta of this, but um, just for anyone who hasn't, right, let's go and grab hold of... Right, let's listen, listen to a few sounds in here. How nice is that? It's just great. You know, when I first started pissy panting around with this app, and I went through the presets, I just, I just, uh, I put it on, you know, just a little MIDI loop, and I went through the presets, and I went through all of them, and they all sound great. And then I just kind of went through all of them again, and I just, wow, um, just, um, it's quite spectacular. So. I think I'm just going to go with that one. I think I like that one. Right, now who wants to pick a reverb? Somebody pick a reverb. No doubt someone will pick a reverb I haven't got. I've got less reverbs than most people as well. I've only got about 90. You know, that one might be quite good. Uh, 
he said, shooting 20 miles past it because of the mouse wheel. Uh, yeah, FAC Chorus is spectacular. You think Roomworks works SE? Um, yeah, it is. FAC Chorus is my favourite chorus. It's definitely my favourite to put on a bass guitar or electric guitar. Uh, this one's a, it's a very different kind of chorus. It's not really in competition with it. It's very, very different. You've got to have both, basically. You need both. All right, okay. I quite like that. So let's go and get a bass sound. And what's got, what's got a good bass sound in it I could use? Of course, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to use a real bass sound. You could use a synth bass sound. What's got a good synth bass in it that we could use? Right, I'll tell you what. You lot decide what synth bass I should use. Make sure you pick an app I've got. And uh, Pure Synth has some good basses in. Um, I've only got the um, free, totally not paid for any any in-app purchases version, though. But I think there are some basses in that, aren't there? I think there are. Let's have a look. You know, it's great, this, you know. Pissy panting about, live streaming with some friends online who I've never met in person, but have become good friends with. Just making some music and um, making lots of mistakes and being a stupid old hippie. It's fantastic. Okay. I really am rubbish with this mouse. Just play that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Does that in any way fit with what we have for the other part? Does anyone care? <laughs> I like it. Alright, Vortex, I'm getting a bit carried away here. I'm enjoying myself. So, um, I think I've covered the details that I need to cover, the important bits and pieces about the MIDI packs, etc. Uh, if there's anything that you think I should have said, then please throw it into the chat and, and remind me. Because I'm, I'm just enjoying myself now. Um, okay, so I'm going to go with this. I need a sound for this. Which actually sounds quite nice on piano. And like I said before, you can use any of these MIDI parts on any instrument of your choosing. It really doesn't have to be guitar. feel kind of like it possibly should be for the purposes of this demo as you know ah yes yes it also comes with some free chord charts to help people learn guitar which is what i do with most of my time when i'm not gigging i'm i'm teaching and helping people to get their fingers around um guitar chords which um the problem with guitar is is 
it's, it's not the hardest of instruments to play, but it's I think it's one of the hardest instruments to start. The very beginnings of it is hard. And that's why almost every household has a guitar in the back of a cupboard somewhere that's been played twice. It's not that guitar's too hard to learn, though. It's just that you gave up, is what I always say to students. It's just that you gave up. Nobody likes hearing that. Ooh, 12 string guitar. Ah, this sometimes happens in this app where it it gets upset with me. Um just choose another guitar sound. Right. Okay. When it does this, when it goes all silent on me, I have to go and choose another. AV3 and then go back. I need mouse practice. That's what I need. Right. Let's find some guitars again. I'm going to try that 12 string guitar again. I thought that I had promise. I've also noticed it really doesn't like me turning the reverb off with the mouse. There we go. With this, you know, I'm going to throw... Um, I'm going to throw Nambrini's doubler on it. Let's try and get a really big 12-string sound. It's a long way down the list is N, isn't it? Nambrini doubler. Right. Okay, and finally, yeah, 24 string guitar. <laughs> have I ever played my eight string bass on a live stream? I, I'm not sure that I have on a live stream. It is a, um, it's it's over there. My arm's not long enough. It's it's not like an extended range instrument. It's um, it's an octave eight string. So it's like, um, well, it's a so you get a low E, and then you get like a guitar low E right next to it, and so on and so on. And it's awesome, absolutely awesome. I don't play it much at the moment because, uh, because, well, there's not really much call for it in a wedding band, if I'm honest. <laughs> right. Some kind of lead guitar sound. Right, what we got, what we got? Overdriven guitar?
you know what I got? In the sales, I got... You've probably all got this already. Um, a nap I never got. Um, where is Looks frantically for app he can't find. Shut up. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to use my finger for this because you know what? The mouse wheel is just... It's screwing me over. Right, okay. So I got myself um, the Desert City's delay, right? It's not under D, is it? Where is it? What's its full proper name? I've still got Luna Lander, look. Don't update if you want to keep Luna, Luna Lander. I love it. Ah, all the desert cities, right? None of you helped me. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Colin. <laughs> That's the lag for you. Okay, so, um, so, and I've not played with it yet at all, right? I've not had a chance to use it, I've just not had time. So let's just see what we can do with it. Guitar. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now, right, following the mix, put it back here. Right, let's add a reverb. It is. It's magic, isn't it? So it's fantastic that. That's the first time I've had, I've had a chance to have a go in it. Uh, So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm relatively pleased with that, you know, to say I, um, to say that, you know, not that long ago I would have said that I, you know, that I, that MIDI guitar was a, a daft idea, and actually, you know what, having done this this project for Vortex and pissy pantsed around with it myself, I have to say, you know, there's definitely legs in this, and um, and I've enjoyed it, and I'd like to say thank you very very much to Vortex for asking me to do this job. And to all of you for watching today. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to say, um, I haven't got time now. But what I wanted to do, when I tried to put a bit of a track together, and, it, you know, not a track, but just, you know, get a, a decent little loop going around like that and get some sounds on this MIDI, um, I thought I'd add some drums. And the drums I wanted to add um, were an app that I just got 
I just got uh, yesterday and I've had time for a quick play with it and um, I'm in the wrong thing because I'm talking and doing at the same time and I'm not bright enough to do that. Um, drum 80, right? So I'm just going to tell you very, very quickly, if you like drums and you like, uh, if you like your yeah, 80s drum sounds, um, this is, it's pretty magic. And uh, if I just press that, ooh. It's really, it's pretty cool. It's really, really good. Um, thank you very much, Keith. Thank you. And, and Mr. Ninja, I didn't see you sneaking into the chat. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you. I really like that compliment. Um, yeah, it's great. I'm not going to tell shooting out, but it really is good. You should definitely buy this. If you like that 80s drum kind of thing, um, where it's um, early synth drum type sounds, but with, but with sampled cymbals. It's magic. All right. So before I go, um, if I don't have a chance to do another stream um, this side of Christmas, everyone have a fantastic, marvelous Christmas and a superb New Year. Uh, I really, really appreciate all the support from all of you for being here today and for following my channel and checking out my videos and, um, you know, and giving me a, a dirty little thumb up and a subscribe thanks ever so much if you would like to do anything at all to help out the channel um you know what to press or, or if you look down underneath the video you'll see all the ways that you can check out my music my website merchandise all that stuff ways you can help out the channel so thanks ever so ever so much and i will see you very soon take care and bye, -bye. <laughs>